Child, these girls is cutting up. They cutting up. They cutting up. They cutting up. They cutting up. So as you know, to go with the um the reunion for the dungeon theme, that's why I still got this hat on. Trust me. After next week, when this shit go off, y'all not gonna be seeing this because it's hot. It be making my hair sweat. And I mean, it's cute or whatever, but it's only for special occasions, much like this right here. So. The episode starts off with Drew and Latoya. So Drew telling Latoya um, she has the perfect marriage and the perfect kids, etc., etc. Drew, go to hell. Um, Latoya was asked uh, what did Drew do to her to make her talk about her so much. And Latoya straight up lies and said that she never talked about her first. Like Latoya, that's the thing that really... That's the thing that really pisses me off about you. And that's the thing that makes me not like you. Because you want to sit up and throw shade. But then when somebody call you out on it, you don't stand in what you said. Or you don't stand in what you did. And I hate a bitch like you. If you did it, say you did it. If you said it, say you said it. You came in throwing shade. She shaded your ass back. She did absolutely nothing to you to deserve it. And I just really wished you would have just admitted it. Had you just said, yeah, I said it because I didn't like that hoe. I would go up for you. I would go up for you because you said, you said what you said. And you stood up in it. Like, I can't get with you. Um. Anyway... Um, Cynthia talks about them always clowning about their wigs and how tired and late it is because all of them over the years have had badass wigs like Candy with their rooster cut and Nene with their uh, pack of ramen noodles on her damn head that was ate out in the back. Um, Cynthia had a couple bad wigs too. You know what I'm saying? Um, Marlo did too. All of y'all did. They tired, lazy ass reads. Um... And then Kenya talks about Drew um, throwing her hair, throwing shade at her hair care products on Twitter. Kenya, I don't care. Um, Latoya and Kenya's crush child. Everybody know they want a kitty click. So Kenya says that she's disappointed in her about a lot of things. But one thing in particular, she felt like Latoya did not have her back in a lot of situations. And I was kind of with Latoya on that. Bitch, not, I, I'm not here to fight all of your battles just because I'm your friend. If you started something with these people and it had absolutely nothing to do with me, why are you looking for me to have your back? That's not my job to have your back. I won't dare when you made the offense. So don't look to me to have your back when you've done something to these ladies and they calling your ass to the mat for it. Anyway, um, Kenya talking about some she ain't into women. Kenya, yes, she is. She was married to a whole damn woman and had a baby by that hoe. Moving on. Um... Drew says that she saw something between Kenya and Latoya, and Latoya says that her and Drew kiss. Drew denies it, and Candy admits that Portia saw him too, child. Lord have mercy, Jesus. <laughs> Listen, I'm not shocked, um, Drew. I know how you babbled up in holes. I like. I had a few of y'all in my time. A few of y'all come a dime a dozen. I know if the men doing it, the women gots to be doing it too. So, you know, hey. It is what it is. All right, y'all. Okay, you guys. So, I'm back. Um, so, Latoya was asked about why she told the other ladies about the alimony. And Latoya plays dumb. And I'm sorry. I, I was with Kenya. Latoya, listen. I was with her. You can't use how young you are to play stupid and naive. You're not. You're not. You already knew the dynamics. I know you know because I know you watched the show. I know you watched the show because you wanted to be on the damn show. So you already knew the dynamics between Kenya and Portia and what's going on with Drew and Shamia and this, this, that, and this. So you wanted to be messy and solidify your spot on this show. So why not sit up and try to indulge information that you done heard about another cast member to other cast members that don't particularly see it for her? Moving on. So Kenya says that Portia groomed Drew to not like her. 
And I, I wouldn't necessarily say she groomed her. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say she groomed her, but I do feel like she kind of created a space to where even if Drew put 20 or 10 on something that it came to with Kenya, because it's Kenya, you would just agree with her. And you know what I'm saying? Try to pull her closer to your side. Like, that's what I think. And I got my head like this um, because this is kind of like my shade. Okay. And I'm going to just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> so Marlo and Shamia come on. And Shamia says that her inspiration is old glam, Diana Ross. Shamia, your inspiration was Party City 499. This was the best that I could do because they could not decide whether or not they really wanted me to be on the reunion or not. So they called you at the last minute and you couldn't find nothing on time. So you went down to Party City and they you got you a cute little Diana Ross costume. And that's what you decided to come down there in. Just say that. Um, and then you bringing up Marlo's lipo. For what? You brought it up and you got absolutely nothing for it. Then she admitted that she got it. Moving on. Um, uh, they talk about Ken uh, Kenya's hospitality during the trip. So then a fan calls Candy out about only calling Kenya out about the crab cakes, but nothing else. And Kenya calls Candy out about extending the other ladies the option to bring their children. It don't matter, Kenya. You should have extended you should have extended them the olive branch um simply because of the fact of their mothers. Like Kenya, if anything else, y'all should connect as mothers. So it wouldn't have been cost you nothing to go on ahead and just had extend the invite. And much like Portia said, they would have asked production and if it was okay, and if they really wanted to bring their baby, they could have. <sighs> we'll be right back. All right, you guys. So Portia calls Kenya out about a tweet she made about her mothering and about it being called guilt. Um, Kenya, that was passive aggressive. It was very passive aggressive, Kenya. And you should have known that it would have made made her feel away. You know what I'm saying? Like I like that's the thing that bugs me with Kenya because it's the same thing with Latoya too. Like. You pick and choose when you want to take accountability for the fuck shit and the fuckery that you be causing. And that's that that's that's why I don't see it for you. Like, if I said anything about anybody, y'all already know how I am. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. I said it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I moving on. Uh we're gonna discuss more tomorrow at eleven o'clock. Um so Drew talks about why she told the other ladies about um, the jet. And she says she never outed her. She held her accountable. Um, Drew talks about her health condition when Kenya tries to body shame her. And then Kenya saying it back to Drew. Um, Drew, you full of shit too. Drew, I don't give a damn. It shouldn't have made you feel uncomfortable at all because you ain't know none of them bitches deep enough to have an emotional connection or ties to none of them. So it, it wouldn't have cost you nothing to keep that secret. If she asked you not to tell them you're new to the situation, why not just play neutral and just be mums the word with it? Like, you don't, you, you don't, like, you're not smart enough for reality TV, Drew. You're really not. You're not smart enough for reality TV. You obviously don't see how reality TV work. Um, and about your health condition, Drew, I'm not going to make no light about that. And I'm really sorry to hear that you have to go through a hysterectomy. Thank God you've already had your children and you've already had your children with your husband. So I, that is a blessing. But I am I, I do feel sorry for you about that. And I'm not going to make no kiki about that. Um, so then they talk about Cynthia and Mike's wedding. Girl, who cares? Andy read the mean tweets that people just said about that damn wedding. And, and it was everything that we all said. And it was everything that everybody asked, which was, why do you feel the need to have this now? It's the middle of COVID. You finna have a COVID-con wedding. For what? Especially when Mike already said, 
he ain't even got to have all that just to marry you. I'm just saying. And then she talks about how bringing up her dad and their situation kind of affected their relationship. Cynthia, you're right. Keep your dad up off of here. Your dad does have the right to say whether he wants to be talked about on reality TV, especially if he's not there or willing to be there to tell his side of the story. So I'm glad that you're keeping that communication there and you're like, fine, he felt uncomfortable. I've apologized and I would just let that rest where it's at. And she's not wrong for that. We'll be right back after this commercial break. All right, you guys, and we are back for the final stretch of this thing. So then they talk about Portia and Candy's relationship. Marlo feels like they got super close after the dungeon party as if somebody got dirt on somebody around there and we're going to get to that in a minute. And then Kinga says, in her opinion, she should still have one eye open when someone crosses you. And I have to agree with Kenya. At the end of the day, for whatever reason, Candy decided to forgive Portia. It didn't happen to us, so we don't have the right to sit up and question why she decided to forgive her. For whatever reason, she forgave the bitch, all right? I'm fine with Candy forgiving Portia. It is what it is, but I am with Kenya. When somebody can lie to you on an extent like that, or not or not even lie on you, but help, help the rumor grow legs by spreading it to other castmates and this, this, that, and this on national TV, what else can you do to me? You understand what I'm saying? So it, it, I, I'm kind of with Ken, Kenya. I would forgive her, but I'll never forget it. And I, I, I see you for your works. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the way that I would go about it. But it is what it is. So the stripper gate comes up, dear God almighty. So Candy gives Andy the dungeon name Silver Bullet, dear God almighty. And then Latoya ate Portia out. But see, we already knew that. Because the story was after she ate her out and Portia came all down her throat, um, Latoya had to go in the bathroom and throw up. And I bet she did. I mean, after she had that wiener, pet, wiener schnitzel petting turtle shell built shaped ass nigga all up in between her legs and in her butt and had a damn baby that crawled out of it. And it will probably make me throw up too, Latoya. So I totally understand how you and your stomach feels in that moment. Um, so Marlo calls out Portia for not being a good friend to her. Portia says that there was no issue. Portia stopped lying. There was an issue. And you was bothered that she decided to go on ahead and make up with Kenya, your arch nemesis, because all of this time, it has always been you and Marlo. Okay. You felt the way. And that was the issue. So stop saying there was no issue. There was an issue. So then Portia says that it's exhausting because she know what she did. There was no issue from South Carolina to the pumpkin patch. And I just had no idea what that meant. There was an issue. There was. There was. The minute that Kenya and Marlo came downstairs and said they made up, you had an issue. That happened in South Kakalaka, which then for carried over to the pumpkin patch because you talked about it then. So stop saying that there was no issue, Portia, because yes, it was. You have an issue. And if you're supposed to be so real and if you're supposed to be about it, why not just admit that there's an issue? <sighs> so then Shamia chiming in. Girl, I didn't care. And then Marlo calls out Candy saying that Candy was the one that told her way more information about what Bolo and Portia and Tanya, you got to throw Pennywise up in there because that bitch was there too. Um, and she knows way more about the going zone down to that damn room. And we're not going to find out the going zone of what happened in that damn room until next week, you guys, because that was the end of the episode. Really good. Really good. Really good. I was here for it. Um, and I can't wait to see what next week got. So until tomorrow, you guys. 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock Central, the last gag after show where we really dig in deep, go in and let have it, analyze the situation. And uh, yeah, don't meet me there, beat me there. I'm going to holler at y'all later. Bye. What you giving, that's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a